Was that directed at me or uh, JF? Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyone. Oh, okay. Because yeah. generally I find people ignore certain points that are made. So. Yeah, I mean, I think it's just going to be free form, so you guys can just talk. Gentlemen, hello, gentlemen. How are you doing? I'm doing Good. great. Oh. And I guess you guys may be aware of each other. Um, Darth, uh, you might know JF. You guys should, you know, introduce each other, let each other know sort of what you do, relevant qualifications, anything of interest. Yeah. I'm familiar with JF. Yeah, just for the audience. Well, I'm a Christian fundamentalist, and I debate on uh, the internet, um, informal debates, that is, um, for Christian theism and against all worldviews that deny Christian theism. Yeah, and same for you, Jeff. Right. Just give, a, give us a basic idea of what you do. So I am a biologist. I am a thinker on the question of uh, the emergence of life, uh, most Importantly, perhaps for this debate, I'm just a man who, who looks at the world and sees evolution as a satisfying explanation for the diversity of life. On okay, well, uh, I'm not going to moderate at all. I don't like being involved, so you guys just go ahead. I know the areas of disagreement are Christianity and evolution, so whoever wants to start, just go crazy and I'll step yeah. back. Um, you said you're a biologist. <clears throat> Do you uh, have a degree? Yes, I have an undergrad in biological science and then a PhD in neuroscience. And then I have done evolutionary work with monkeys and postdoctoral work at Duke University. And then I've been in clinical practice in psychiatry doing research on genetics and uh, mental illness. And uh, I also have my book, The Revolutionary Phenotype, which is a completion of Richard Dawkins' work, uh, particularly on the question of the emergence of life and how a genetic codes evolve. Um, are you an atheist? Uh, yes, I'm an atheist in that I don't have a belief in uh, an intelligent being intervening on the events of planet Earth for the last few billion years. Uh, I don't see any evidence or I don't see any sign that we should refer or that we must invoke a supernatural entity to explain the events of planet Earth. How did you determine that... Uh, dependent facts don't stand in causal relations to God as the origin. Uh, sorry, uh, can you clarify what that means? I'm not sure I understand. Well, you said you don't see evidence for God, which means you made a determination that facts need not reference God as the ultimate starting point. How did you determine that? Well, it's mostly a matter of logical uh, interpretation of all the evidence we see. So essentially, if I had seen a hand coming out of the sky and playing with the genome of salamanders, then I would be forced to say, well, there must be, there must be some hand in the sky. Uh, it must be some sort of agent controlling it. I don't see any of that. I don't see anything that uh, necessitates a divine intervention in the universe. Um, you, you basically stated that facts for their viability and intelligibility don't require referencing God. You still haven't told me how you determined that. Uh, well, it would be a series of facts that I would observe in the universe that would necessitate God. That is, there would be no possible other explanation. You're not understanding the question. Uh, there's there's two positions that can be taken and not a third. Either either facts must by necessity reference God as the origin point, as the ultimate, or facts do not need to reference God as the ultimate for their existence as dependencies. Your position is facts do not require referencing God as the ultimate origin point. Is that your position? Absolutely. Uh, the the how, fact how, that how, I did, how, did, how did you determine that? Well, none of them uh, necessitate mathematically or logically a divine intervention. In other words, alternative explanations to God exist. You're, you're making the same claim. 
Okay, how do you how do you know? Well, for, first of all, offering alternative explanations. We're talking about God as the ultimacy of reality, from which all dependent facts derive. Now, if you do not accept that and you say uh, God is not the reference point, the ultimacy of reality from which all dependent facts flow, then what you're going to have to tell me is, do you know what the origin point of all things that begin is? Since you have ruled out God. Um, do I know the ultimate origin point? No, I do not know, for example, why then the universe did, yeah. exists. Yeah, then how did you rule out God as the origin point? Well, it's not that I ruled it out. It's that I yes, said I don't see any facts that necessitate no, God. It's a different... You're not understanding the issue, okay? Either facts necessarily require referencing God or a fact or facts in general do not require God as the origin point. There's only two positions, okay? Because God is defined as that which is ultimate, <clears throat> absolute, and the origin point of all things that begin. So either facts necessitate referencing God or they do not. Which is your position? My position is I don't see any facts and I've not been confronted with any observation. I didn't ask you about what you saw. God as an explanation. I didn't ask you what you saw. You, you, your position is propositional, that facts need not reference God for their metaphysical existence, viability, and intelligibility. Is that your position? Um, I'm not sure I have a metaphysical position on this. Of You're course, trying course, to bring me on a territory. Of course, of course you do. Okay. Um, God is a worldview. God entails the creator-creation distinction. Have you ever heard it defined that way? Uh, I'm up for this definition. You go ahead. Right. Now, uh, the creator-creation distinction is a worldview. Do you understand? Okay. Do you have that worldview? Uh, the distinction between creator and creation. No, it's answer, not a, no, it's no, not no, a particularly don't. important semantic di right. distinction. Okay. So you don't, you do not accept that worldview, right? So you're an atheist. Well, you do, you do not accept. You do not accept. You do not accept the creator-creation distinction, right? What? Well, what does that entail? It seems that you're talking about a worldview just, where I see a similar. I'm asking distinction. you a simple question: Do you accept or do you not accept the creator-creation distinction? As defined as I God. accept nothing that comes from a random guy on the internet asking me to take position on things that he hasn't is your worldview does it entail the creator creation distinction uh no none none of my worldview requires a creator okay creation. So that's all I, that's all i need to know it's a simple question now whatever worldview that you do not accept you deny in virtue of whatever worldview you're speaking from Okay, do you understand that's due to an application of the law of excluded middle to worldviews? Okay, whatever worldview you do not accept, you deny in virtue of the worldview that you're speaking from. Do you understand? Uh, it depends. Uh, I think that you have a. I think that you are splitting things to be logically either true or false. When I talk of these things, I, I like to think of possible. I'm not words. hearing a clear then, answer. I asked, do you understand what I said? Uh, I do not care about answering this question since you're trying to it's, it's put a, it's a digital a relevant, it's a it, is a, it is a relevant question. The creator it is a false distinction. dichotomy, as we the, it's not a false dichotomy, sir. What's the false? Like, what's is. the third alternative? The alternative is that there are facts that I can see in the world that can lead me to think to possible world. Yeah, possible you're, you're speaking. Yeah, you're just giving me rhetoric right. Explanation. You're giving me rhetoric right now. So let's simplify. No, no, no. It is not okay. rhetoric to I, recognize listen, that yeah, multiple you're, yeah, you're theories filibuster. can explain the world yeah, as it is. Right, right. You're, you're okay, a very, so we're get down, you're a very as disgusting we say in America, person to talk to. Okay. As we're we're going to get down to brass tacks because I've listened to you debate before and you're very gifted at filibustering. Now, you do not accept the creator creation distinction. Therefore, your worldview entails being not the creator creation distinction. Do you understand that? Uh, no, I do not care about these distinctions. 
No, sir, either your worldview entails the creator-creator distinction or it does not entail the creator-creator distinction. Which is your worldview? My, in my worldview, creator, dis- creator and creation distinctions are possible constructs to superimpose. No, 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 no sir, fact. that's a fallacy. That's, that is an incoherent fallacy, and I will explain why. It is not. You, okay? I will explain why it is a fallacy to you. You are advocating what is known as pluralism. The only worldview that you can put on the table is your worldview. To offer another worldview that is not your own is a contradiction to your worldview. Do you understand what I have just said? Uh, No. You can only offer your worldview as a foundation and a basis from which to speak forth facts. You cannot offer other worldviews that are not your own. To do so is a contradiction in terms. Every other worldview other than your own is a contradiction to your worldview. You cannot say that another worldview that is not your own is a potential actual. That is a contradiction in terms. That is fallacious, sir. No, it is not, sir. Do you agree that the law of excluded middle, are you familiar with that? The law of excluded middle? Uh, it is fallacious to be. Uh, Are you familiar with the law? You see, J- JF, JF, listen possible. to me carefully. I'm very familiar with your filibustering techniques. I don't mean to be insultive to you, but I'm ver- I've watched your debates, okay? You are very gifted with rhetoric. That doesn't impress me. Now, I'm going to ask you a very specific question Are you familiar with the law of excluded middle, and do you accept it? Uh, the law of excluded middle is an axiomatic uh, logical statement that can be uh, included in certain do you uh, accept frameworks it? of uh, I do not. You do not accept the law of excluded middle. So something can be true and false at the same time and in the same sense? It depends. It depends on which that? logical framework you work in. Do you, you accept the law? Depend. Do you accept the laws of logic? Uh, well, I accept that they exist and that you can invoke them, but okay. you can also invoke are they, alternative. Are they absolute and invariant and universal? No, not universal. Though, so, good. Are they conventional? Uh, what does that mean? Are they man-made, man-contrived? Uh, yes, to some extent, yes. Uh, I believe. Okay, all right, good. There, there, therefore, whenever you employ either explicitly or implicitly principles of logic, they're simply human conventions and are not are, are not universally binding or obligatory, sir. Well, you, I you've, am not, a you've now being, you've now reduced universal you've, you've now reduced you've now reduced the principles of logic to human subjectivity. Oh yes. Good, then it's game over for you, sir. Then your whole system is simply an array of subjectiveness. Therefore, you cannot make any uh, objective determinations whatsoever. Well, it looks like I've been BTFO'd on the internet. Uh, uh, say that again? It looks like I have been BTFO'd on the internet. Yeah, that was pretty quick, wasn't it? All right, bye. Bye-bye. And he leaves. Now, now, did you guys, did you guys see, did you, did you, you guys see how long that took me to dismantle him? And, and, um, um, Jay Dyer went on and on with this guy. You see, you can't let this guy filibuster. And I didn't.